have a couple of stories today. Both of these stories were shared by listeners of the channel. Thank you. Background. About 10 years ago, my late wife and I started living apart after she died and I was at the family home. My neighbor asked what was going on. I explained that she was a long-term cheater and I stayed because of religious views. He was sympathetic but suggested his wife would never do that story. My next door neighbor is a Mexican-American that immigrated properly to the United States. He left Mexico over 30 years ago to provide a better life to his wife and children. His wife was a school teacher in Mexico and wanted to stay with her job until retirement. He worked very hard and even did many side hustles so that he could pay off his home here and send money to his wife in Mexico. Slowly over time, his children all emigrated to the United States and found good jobs, spouses and children of their own. Many own their own homes. His youngest daughter stays with him as her husband abandoned her and her daughter before the child was born. His youngest son is useless and was involved in drug usage and gangs between Christmas and New Year's. Every year he vacationed, returned to Mexico to be with his wife and see his parents while he was there. He was always doing things to make his wife's life easier as well as for his parents. He was totally loyal, no affairs or girlfriends to his wife and marriage. All these years, his wife kept promising that she would come to be with him. After she retired, he has lived next door to me since coming to the United States. And we have become the best of friends and neighbors in the classic sense that we help each other and do things for each other. Not one time during his time in America has his wife ever come to see him be with him, stay with him, vacation here. Nothing. He was injured badly and had to go to the hospital for care and then convalesce at home for weeks at no time. Did his wife even inquire about his health? Then a car accident laid him up and his wife still didn't come or ask. My neighbor is now in his 60s and retired from a job with the local government. His wife retired from her job and he kept asking her to come to the United States and be with him. She always refused. Finally about three or four years ago, she told him she had a long-term boyfriend and wanted a divorce. She told him she would not move to the United States as she has built a life there with her boyfriend in Mexico. My neighbor is Catholic and this was a severe blow on several fronts. He has worked side hustles to send money to her. Ever since he immigrated here, she would not tell him how long she has had her boyfriend. But it is sad to say he has been funding their lifestyle by literally working himself very hard over the years. Needless to say his mental attitude has suffered and he questions himself as to how all this happened and why he has even thought it might be his fault. But I explained, it was not just imagine what he could have done if he had not sent money to his wife and how his life would be different if she would have been honest and divorced him 30 years ago. Just goes to show how deceitful some women are. I have suggested that he might want to find a girlfriend, but he refuses to look at Western women, which is very smart. He is starting to consider the idea of a Filipino woman for the remainder of his life, but he isn't ready yet mentally. In my opinion, it's just sad that a man basically threw his money away. That's basically what he did because a selfish woman did not want to accompany her husband to another country. She retired from her profession. Which is good, but she still took her husband's money. She is a deceitful crook. It's sad. A lot of women, not all women will do despicable things just to have access to a man's resources. I'm really new to this guys. So sorry for not using all the acronyms. I'm a 37-year-old guy who's been with his 33-year-old girlfriend for 7 years. We met over Bumble. She was the first date I ever went on using a dating app and it was awesome. We grew together. I moved to London to be closer to her, changed jobs to do the same. We bought a dog together and many dogs hunt. Of course, because that's the cliché norm and eventually bought a flat together in North London. Our lives were perfect and I assume we were steadily building our lives together. I would have easily asked her to marry me in July 2022. After weeks of my gut instinct telling me something was wrong. 
I snooped on her phone and discovered that she had been sleeping with her work colleague for the last 20 months. At that time, it equated to 25% of our entire relationship. I did the math in a moment of pain shopping. She had been using the fact that I work 12-hour shifts to her advantage whether day or night, weekday or weekend, whenever I was at work. She frequently arranged to go see this colleague who conveniently for her, lived only 500 meters away. I cried for days and didn't eat or sleep for that same period. We went through a week of disclosure, which was cathartic as hell but incredibly brutal. She became very disconnected from the emotion which was odd but gave me bare truths how often, how much better and how much bigger I even had access to their entire WhatsApp conversation. Simply the worst. I found out that she loved. The other guy did far more sexually adventurous stuff with him, described their sex as better and far worse that all being said. However, she said that she stated from the outset that she'd never leave me for him and still loved me in a moment of despair about what options I had. I decided to try reconciliation. I tailored my language to be non-insulting. I chose not to tell my family although did disclose to two close male friends and calmly carried on. I bought a shit ton of books off Amazon to do with infidelity books, to do with moving on books, to do with staying books from the cheater's point of view and books that even consider that a fair partner's point of view price. This post is getting long. Okay. So I had a frank discussion with my girlfriend and relayed the rules of our continued relationship and what we would consider cheating Cesar call contact. Tell me about future contact. She offered open phone access and a few more tactics. Then in November 2022, after seeing a damn TikTok video, I learned about deleted iMessages and used that and open phone access to find that she had not ceased contact at all with the other guy. She explained that way. And once again, I the chump here carried on. Then in early January 2023 I found yet another deleted iMessages on her work phone. This time to the other guy again, she tried to explain it away. But ultimately, regardless of physical contact or not, it was now a breach of our agreed no contact rule. She had tried to keep it a secret by moving communications onto her work phone. She had tried to delete messages. Not well, and she had not mentioned any of this to me. But once again, CH here carried on. Then yesterday, I found data that showed that she had once again contacted the other guy. I confronted her and she admitted it once again. But this time I fled the house and going to a friend's house. I'm writing this from a sofa bed of a four-child house. Thank God for friends. I'm deeply afraid of what's next. I know what I have to do, but I just don't know if I have the strength to do it. I love this girl and my soul yearns for her TLDR girlfriend of seven years, cheated on me, I tried reconciliation, reset all boundaries and got cheated on again. Three more times which I discovered personally, I'm devastated and lost and have no idea what to do. In my opinion, this is why you don't give someone who cheats on you a second chance. As you notice, this woman had two phones and pretended she was done contacting the other guy on her phone but she had another phone. People listen, life is too short to try and love someone who does not want to love you back. The best thing to do is leave. Don't resort to violence and lose your freedom over someone again. Life is too short.